We've done solid ombres, we've done glitter ombres, we've done foil ombres, and flake ombres, but I haven't done any triple ombres for you guys. What's up, Nail Crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer, and today we are attempting a tri-color ombre. The last time I did one of these, it was pretty messy, kind of a disaster, but I've upped my nail game, I feel like, since then, and I wanted to retry. A bunch of you have asked me how I do dip manis directly over a builder gel, and I thought this would be a great time to show it, so I feel like I was like jumping all in. If I don't like this ombre, then it's gonna be stuck on my nails for a while because I did not use peel base. It's been a minute since I've not used peel base. I've been using it so much lately. Once you have your builder gel on and it's all cured, it's filed in shape, you wanna make sure that the top of your builder gel is a little bit rough up and this is going to allow better adhesion for your dip base on your builder gel then i go through and i wipe all my nails off with my ever so trusty <laughs> isopropyl alcohol then what you want to do is you want to apply a thin layer of dip base over your entire nail that's what i'm doing right now and you want to let that dry i know that everybody doesn't do this step but for me it really helps my dip mayonnaise adhere better when i'm using dip liquids now <laughs> I decided to dip into clear because I realized at the end that I filed my builder gel really thin by accident. So I thought, you know what, I better just dip my nail into clear just to make sure that my nails aren't too thin when I go to do my dip powder manis because I am super, super rough on my hands. So typically I would just let my first layer of dip base totally dry. You wanna make sure that you have your colors ready to go. I like to put them into cupcake liners, the bigger cupcake liners, cause that just gives me room to do my ombre. You need three separate brushes for this. And I decided to do two bigger brushes and one smaller brush. My bigger brushes are from OG Dip Powder, the ombre brushes, and the smaller one is um, a wet and wild one that I can't remember where I got it. I think it was either Target or Walmart. They both sell the wet and wild brand. So you want to make sure that you apply your layers thinly. You do an extra couple strokes over your nail with the brush just to like make it a little bit wetter. <laughs> that sounds funny. Uh, <laughs> you see, so you do a couple extra strokes of the base liquid over your nail just to give it that little bit of extra base on it so that you have time to do all three ombres. Now, the liquids that I'm using, the OG Dip Powder liquids, they are medium dry time, so I always have more than enough time to ombre, but I like to just do a couple extra strokes of my brush to make sure there's enough liquid on there so I 100% have enough time because sometimes I tend to move a little bit slow or like I drop stuff. On my pointer nail, I started ombreing the teal color, the Wet Bandits first, uh, and it just didn't seem like by the time I got to the pink, it, there wasn't quite enough room for it. So I wanted to make sure that when I did my middle finger, I started with the pink color. The pink is all about that base and the purple is Female Fight Club. I started out with my pink on the very tippy top. And when you're doing the ombre, you want to make sure whatever color you're starting with, the second and the third layers or however many layers of ombre you're doing, that in those next colors, they overlap the first color so your first your second color will overlap your first color a little bit and then your third color will overlap your second color a little bit that's how you get that beautiful blend on your nails and get that gorgeous ombre effect that you're going for you can see the difference in the color payout between my pointer finger and my middle finger when you start with the bottom color that wet bandits and start ombreing that first you get a much darker color blend i found than when you start with the pink on the very top but it just wasn't blending the way I wanted to. I felt like the colors were almost a little too stark and they didn't they didn't do the ombre, they didn't do the blending quite as nicely as when I started with the pink on the top. So when I went back to my pointer finger, I decided to start with the pink and I was hoping that that would give it a better ombre effect and a better like true blend because right, that's what the ombre is when you're blending your colors in so that you kind of can't tell where each one starts and each one stops and that's how you get the good ombre you like when your colors you blend so nicely into one of another that they're not just these you know straight color blocked lines that's when you know okay 
I did a nice job ombre -ing. I did a nice job tapping, scrubbing, whatever way you're doing it. Once my powder's dry for my ombre, I like to look at it and see, okay, is there anything that looks like it could be blended better? And that's when you can go and do a little bit of scrubbing. I know that most people like to do either the tap or the scrub. I end up really liking to do a combination of the both because I've noticed when you scrub after it's already been tapped, it really gives that better blend effect. So that's what I did on my pointer finger to try to get the ombre to be a better transition and less noticeable of like where the colors were starting and stopping. Once I went to my middle finger, I, I thought, okay, I am gonna do this the right way. I'm gonna make sure I tap really, really well for the pink, get a good amount of powder on there. That's something else when you're doing an ombre, do not be afraid to tap that powder on. You want more powder on your nail than you think you actually want. Because once you start with that one color at the top or at the bottom, whichever way you're starting with, once it's on there, that's it. You're not going to tap any more powder on because you've already covered that space of your nail that you want that color of the ombre. So I started with my pink, then I moved to the purple, and then I went back down to the teal and I made sure I really tapped a lot of powder on there and when I did each you know when I did the purple layer and then I did the teal layer I made sure a little bit of each of those covered the layer above it that's been key for me to getting the really nice blend and having a separate cupcake liner to put all the excess in you saw how much is in there that's the mix of the three colors that just ends up being so much nicer than accidentally contaminating it so I went back to my middle finger once it dried and I went in and I did some scrub especially of the pink because the pink on my pointer finger turned out so dark I looked at my middle and I thought oh my gosh like I can't leave my middle finger with the pink looking so much lighter than my pointer so I went in and really was scrubbing it well to get that nice pink, darker pink you definitely want to go in with clear dip powder fully encapsulate it and activate it before you go in and do glitter. I knew I was going to be doing glitter and I was not about to ruin the gorgeous ombre that I just did. So I always do this whenever I'm doing clear and then glitter nails or, you know, shimmer and then glitter. I like to encapsulate and activate before I even touch any glitter to make sure I don't contaminate my solid and my shimmer nails. That's something you guys will see me do a lot. I tend to be a messy dipper. As you can see, there's like stuff flying all over the place. So I like to always make sure that I top with clear and activate my solid nails and my shimmer nails before I go and I touch the glitter because you know me if you've seen any of my videos you know that no matter what I do like glitter is going to be flying everywhere okay I try really really hard to not be messy I swear I really do and it just I can't help it half the time I spill powders I've dumped over liquids I've dumped over my primer which primer is super sticky okay when you're if you're doing builder gel or any kind of gel and you're using a primer or a bond, that stuff sticks everywhere. Don't accidentally bump that over. Now I'm going to get into my glitter. It's this gorgeous glitter that's part of the Good Place collection from OG Dip Powder, and it's called Poe Body's Nerfect. I just started watching the Good Place. It is hilarious. Uh, definitely some twists that I did not see happening. If you haven't watched that, it's on Netflix, and I just started binging it. I'm almost done with season one, so I think I have like one episode left. If you're anything like me and love TV, it's a great show to binge. Okay, now I'm going to bust out my nail <laughs> my nail condoms. I know they're called finger cots, but that's just not as fun. I'm sorry. I'm not calling these stinking things finger cots. They're getting called nail condoms from now on. I put one on my pointer finger on my other hand because I wanted to be able to press down the glitters. This Poe Body's Nerfic glitter is, I don't even know what to call these. They're these like longer glitter shards. So I wanted to be able to press them down and I'm trying trying really hard to keep any products off my skin. So I thought, oh my gosh, I can use these little nail condoms from Shein. And guess what? You know, as much as I giggled about them in my Shein haul video, <laughs> I actually really, really like them, okay? After using them for this Manny and how nicely they were able to press down glitters, I'm gonna have to start using them and I'll probably laugh most of the time I use them because you know what? Like, life's too short. I'm not gonna keep being serious and <laughs> calling these anything but nail condoms. I went with two dips of the glitter because I felt like one dip just wasn't quite popping enough. I knew that since they're like white and sheer-based glitters that I needed to do two dips to really like give that good pop of all the glitter and make sure it shows up and the little nail condom worked so nice to 
press down those excess glitters. Whenever I'm dipping over builder gel, I typically only do two layers of the color or glitter anyways, and then top with clear. Since I already build my apex with my builder gel, I don't need to worry about building an apex with the dip liquids, which is really, really nice for me because that means less time that I do on my dip mani, and then I can just, you know, get through it quicker. And you can see here, I was showing like how thin it looks even with two dips of the glitter. It's pretty thin. Like these glitter pieces, these shards, whatever you want to call them, laid so beautifully. I always like to make sure that I top my clear, that I top my glitters with clear. That's going to help when you go to file and shape. I pretty much never do not top any kind of any kind of dip mani that I use dip liquids, I always top that with clear dip powder because I like to buff and shape. Even with these liquids that the dip powders go on thinly and I don't need to buff and shape much, I just really like to. I decide to do all that off camera just so that we can focus on top coating and kind of going over that. I haven't done a lot of manis with dip liquids lately, so I wanna make sure that I'm really talking about dip liquids and how to use them. Every kind of dip liquids that you have is gonna have different top coat timing. Now, right there, you guys are gonna see me realize like what the heck is all this dark marks all over my hands? I put on new gloves for when I was using, for when I was dipping my nails and I forgot to wash them before I put them on. I was rushing and just threw them on my nails and then realized, oh my gosh, like, now I have marks all over my hands, but they washed off as soon as I went and washed my hands after the mani. Once you finish buffing and shaping and filing, which I did all that off camera, you want to wipe your nails off with isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free wipe or a paper towel. Make sure that you follow whatever the directions are for the liquids that you're using. I'm using the OG's dip liquids. So the way that the timing of the top coat works is you go in with activator on five nails and you do really generous amounts. Then you count to 10 once you get to your fifth finger. And then you start in with thin layers of top coats, starting with the first layer that you activate Activated. You want to make sure that you keep those layers really thin. That's how they're going to stay shiny. And since I was doing this on my dip powder mani that had been buffed and shaped and I don't have peel base on, I basically acted like it was my natural nails. So I capped the edges on both the first layer of top coat and the second. And you'll go right in with the second layer for your top coating process. Always make sure that you cap your edges on both the first and second layer of the top coat if you'd like to wear them for a while. Now that you learned about ombre, come check out this next video where we talk about how to do an easy color block. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.